Hi everyone, this video is on collecting a lot of resources that I have personally found very useful when preparing for interviews. Uh, recently I gave my uh, interview at Uber and even before that I've always been in the interview space. You know, either I'm taking interviews or the YouTube channel is a place where people keep asking for what kind of resources are nice. Uh, so let me clarify first of all that there's no clear list for this. Uh, all the resources that I'm stating are depending on your seniority as a as a software engineer uh, and also on how much time you have to prepare. So what I have done instead of making a list is make it a 2D matrix. This is how it goes. Let's say you have the time on the X axis and the more time you have, of course, you can guess the more advanced concepts you can learn, the more you have to prepare in a nice way. Uh, and the second thing is how senior you are. So seniority, okay? Now, if you're looking for very high roles, like staff engineer or something like that, then I don't think I'm qualified enough to actually tell you how to do that. But as long as you're looking for something like SD1 to SD3, um, I, think, I think I can help you out quite a bit. All right, uh, why SD3? Because I have actually trained people uh, to get their jobs in SD3. Okay, now, uh, what I mean by time? Well, if you have just one week to prepare, then you are at a very, very, uh, you know, crucial time because you're crunched for time. You need to cram in as much resources and as much intelligence for that interview as you possibly can within this one week. So this is very critical and you need to actually manage this really well. While if you have a job and if you're just looking for a switch for whatever reason, uh, then three months is a very, very long time for an interview. Anything more than this and you're going into the fluffy gray area range where we ourselves are not sure what's going on. All right, uh, what seniority is already defined. Now, what I'm going to do is break this into quadrants. Yeah, because it kind of shows the extremes really well. So if you have a lot of time and you are at a senior position, the things that you'll be evaluated on, your competencies which will be evaluated are your design skills. So how you design systems, this is really important. Uh, system design and not just system design, but also the way you write extensible code, clean code, you know, easily readable code. So that is low level system design, coding, I would say. Design and coding cleanly is what you should be focusing on probably if you're going for an SD3 role, a pretty high role. Uh, while if you have a lot of time as a fresher, then you should be focusing more on, you know, the things that are which will be evaluated. So uh, one of them is algorithms. Difficult algorithms are a part of a lot of interviews when it comes to uh, freshers interview uh, in most of the top companies. Uh, if I'm going to take those company names, then it's like Microsoft, Uber, Google, Facebook, so on and so forth. So algorithms are pretty important here. Uh, the second thing is you need to have your CS fundamentals very, very clear. So it would be really nice if you can get some good projects under your belt, right? And the third thing, I, I'm just gonna mention it as CS fundamentals, but it's not so much fundamentals, it's, it's better that you know them in depth. So the theory of computer science, whether it's databases, networks, uh, you should understand at a, at a you know, higher level why something happens, like why do you have a cache, yeah? Uh, and so on and so forth. So these three things, are things that you can focus on if you have a lot of time and you're, if you're looking for an entry level job into software engineering. Now, if you're crunched for time, then you need to be very careful because there's no time to waste. And effectively what you're doing is you're playing a game where you, know, you want to put in as little effort and as little time to get the maximum returns. So in these cases, what you're also looking to do is clear the filter. Well, I'm trying to clear this markers gap. Yeah, finally. So, <laughs> uh, as an entry level guy with little time, I would ask you to uh, do some problem solving. Why problem solving? Because this is the strongest filter applied to the candidates who are who are you know appearing for their interviews. Uh, very few people clear this, so it's going to be difficult. Uh, and the only way you can actually clear this is to be good at problem solving. 
Uh, how you can do that is something that we'll get to when we are talking about the resources, but this is one of the things you need to focus on. The second thing is CS fundamentals. And when I say CS fundamentals, I literally mean fundamentals. Like how does a TCP handshake work? Yeah, uh, what is database indexing? If you don't know these things, then it's a very big red flag for the interviewer and uh, you're unlikely to get hired if you don't know the CS fundamentals. So whichever branch you are from, if you're from computer science, electronics, whatever be the case, this thing should be done and this thing should be done, okay? Without this, the minimum bar for a software engineer is not going to be met, right? Um, now, what about the minimum bar for someone who's a senior engineer? Well, they need to have some proof that they have done well. So they need to have some stories prepared. Yeah, when your hiring manager comes in, you need to be able to tell what you have done. If you're fumbling over there, or if you're not able to remember the great things that you did, you're actually underselling yourself. So don't do that and make sure that you prepare your stories well. All right, uh, what else? Well, problem solving. Yeah, problem solving is something which is common to software engineering, uh, you know, interviews from SD1 to SD3. Uh, SD3s usually have more focus on how they approach the problem, how they build the solution. Uh, and SD1s usually have a lot of focus on whether they actually solved it. So, of course, different competencies are being measured here. And there is some sort of mixture between all, you know, this whole thing is after all software engineering interviews. But um, the main difference, of course, is how you approach the problem over here versus whether you're able to solve the problem at all. So now that we have these four key quadrants defined, Let's try to think about some good resources for each of these quadrants. Uh, one quick disclaimer here is that if you're coming from something which is not core computer science, maybe from an electronics background, or if you have been working uh, and you want to switch to a technical role, then of course you need to work harder on your fundamentals. And uh, that, is, that is something uh, we have to take for granted. Right. Let's go for the easiest quadrant for me. Uh, the first one is this one where you have some experience and you also have little time to prepare. Uh, in this case, like we said, we need to focus on our stories and on the things that we've already done. So the first thing uh, I draw inspiration from is the current role or the current job that we have. From this itself, if you have a you know technical background, uh, what's going to happen is you will start finding all the good things that uh, exist in your current system understand it in detail, go through the code, go through the design architecture, the arguments for and against things, you know the good things, the bad things, why you did something, why you didn't. Uh, and these arguments are really useful uh, in an interview because you're often asked to explain your current system uh, in detail. So your current job role should be something that you understand at a very deep level. And also uh, there are some interesting stories when you're actually developing the system in the current role also. So that can help. The second thing is role research. I mean, researching on the role that you're applying for. Uh, a lot of people, when they're applying for a particular role, they just go there and they start talking about the things that they have done. But the important thing over here is to know that what does your employer want of you? So you are being paid to do things for them, not you know grow yourself so much. Um, when you start researching on the role that you are applying for, let's say a machine learning expert, or uh, let's say a messaging systems expert, then you need to start inclining your stories towards those competencies. If you start having uh, stories on, let's say machine learning in a job role which doesn't require it, it's interesting, but it's not exciting for the, for the recruiter. Uh, the second thing is you can also align your stories uh, to show in whatever way possible, let's say you haven't done much of machine learning in your life, but you've done a lot of data analysis. So you start talking about the things that you've done with data, uh, the kind of inferences you always try to make, uh, etc, etc. The way that you can portray yourself to be closer to the job role, the higher chance you have of getting hired. All right, so this is also pretty important for me. The third thing would be uh, resume preparation. Kind of is very similar to the first two things, uh, but except that when you actually start noting down the things that you've done, it's, it comes out as a really nice story. You know, there's a clear map of things uh, that you can mention when someone says, so tell me about yourself. Yeah, that's a, it's a pretty important question if you ask me. Now, apart from all this, of course, you also have to fall back on all the simple things that 
is expected of a junior engineer because you know you're going to get paid more so you need to know the things that they know too all right we'll come to this later let's go over here um the first resource that i would say you know these are resources but they, they seem very fluffy because i kept it on purpose a little fluffy so that it's it's customized for yourself right it's not something that you can just go on a site and then do you need to actually work at this the more senior you are the more you have to work at this but anyway coming to the you know good time for preparation good experience first thing would be high scalability this is an excellent blog maintained by the guy who maintains high scalability i, I forgot his name but uh, there's a series of blogs over here explaining system design uh, architectures reasoning logics behind large scale systems uh, and if you understand these things then you understand to a good level how to design systems uh, it's not so much that the blog itself might contain great information but they have great links uh, in, in that post so you can always follow those links try to learn as much as possible uh, if you have time then you know it's a brilliant thing because if this is 3 months let's say then it's umpteen amount of time to learn about large scale systems and start reasoning about your own system uh, based on these things okay what's the second thing the second thing is tech conferences now you don't need to attend them you just need to listen and absorb the things that people have done so this is similar to of course high scalability uh, but tech conferences on youtube are a pretty good resource right uh, infocon if you're a javascript developer then there are conferences for that specific to that um, depending on your language there'll be specific conferences and it's a really really good thing uh, to have tech conferences on youtube are something that i personally use to understand systems uh, and also to get novel ideas on what are, what's a like fresh in thing uh, when it comes to system design this brings us to our third point interview preparation sites a lot of people actually lose touch with simple algorithms and the basic stuff when they are pretty experienced so you need to brush up on those things there's a lot of sites for that we'll be talking about one specifically uh, but some of the free sites are interview bit uh there's hacker rank i just missed the er in hacker rank uh the paid sites would be lead code right so and there's one interesting site that we'll be talking about in just a minute but yeah these are these are the things uh, resources that you can actually use if you have quite a bit of experience and quite a bit of time to actually switch your job the second thing uh, in case you're looking for free stuff is code chef but code chef won't come over here uh, i would actually push it over here also another site which is quite good uh, when it comes to you have a lot of time and you have you're applying for a fresher role is coding game you know coding game uh, has an interesting uh, perspective to learning algorithms or learning programming in general and that is basically gaming you know writing bots writing games uh, such that you learn in the process so these are long contests they take 10 days for long term i would say that you start using uh, reference books if you have that much time so be careful when i say long term it means 3 months all right you are 3 months away from placements uh, the reference books you can use for databases is corth it's a brilliant book please have a look uh, for algorithms you can use corbin now none of these will be actually asked in an interview an interview is not going to ask you such difficult algorithms but it gives you a deep insight into computer science and into mathematics for computer science if you have the time go through these things all right uh, i'll be putting that also in the description below so part 3 is just reference books all right now if you are short on time then you have not code chef code forces now why code forces and why not code chef well code forces uh, has a really good set of problems so these are innovative code chef is kind of repetitive when it comes to problem solving to be honest with you uh, after some point of time the difficulty level is decided by whether it's a segmentary problem or not or whether it's a heavy light decomposition problem or not so it kind of gets a little repetitive over here this is always kind of fresh uh, on top of that they have a lot of dynamic programming and graph problems which are common interview questions so definitely check out code chef uh, code forces if you are short on time uh, and the third thing would be ardent dot art site 
I don't know if he still works for Microsoft, but uh, he's a he's got this really nice list of 21 interview questions, uh, which are very common for computer science graduates. So go through this if you're really short on time, and of course go through this even if you have time. Uh, you know, Arden Dotart, Code Forces, and Algo Expert are probably what you're looking at if you're looking at this video because you're short on time. Uh, otherwise, of course, we have noted down all the resources. If you have you know any uh, comments which are which are like, no, this video didn't make sense, please leave them in the comments below. I mean, I always like a good debate and a good discussion. Plus I go through every comment, so don't worry about that. <laughs> Apart from that, if you like the video, hit the like button. And if you want notifications for further such videos, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time. <clears throat> Before you leave, uh, be sure to check out the links in the description below. And also, all the best.